right, everybody. Thanks again for joining our Footprint uh, Data Drive number four. Um, so we started in about one minute here. Um, I see we have our guest, Heavy Cream. Uh, thanks for joining us, Peter. Um, so yeah, just give it a minute or two. Um, enjoy the chill music, um, and then we'll get started. Hey, Peter, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Wait, let me get this. All right, let me turn the music off. All right, I'm ready to get started. So thank you again, everybody, for joining. Uh, welcome to our Footprint Data Drive number four. So right now, I'm joined with our uh, special guest, Peter from Ichi. Uh, Peter, you want to give us a little introduction uh, about yourself? Yeah, you want an intro for yeah, Ichi whatever. or how do you want? Whatever, man. I'll take an introduction about yourself, about Ichi. Um, yeah, just tell us about yourself, Peter. I guess uh, today we're learning about vaults, you and Ichi. So, yeah, whatever you want to <laughs> share. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, yeah, I'll give a quick rundown of my career. I was in a uh, special agent from the military for 12 years. I uh, worked for Pepsi, companies like that. And then I learned about crypto, uh, participated in the Wonderland fiasco, which was not fun. But that's what <laughs> opened me up to, uh, yeah, that sucked. I, I got hypnotized by the Lambos and uh, how many Lambos I'd win if Wonderland rocketed. And yeah. But, you know, any any bad thing has a, a thing out of it. My good thing was it brought me into DeFi, uh, researched it more, and I was like, okay, this is where I wanted to. So when I um, got with Ichi, my... Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt you. It seems like you're cutting out a little bit uh, there, Peter. Um, maybe um, is it, I, I just, uh, maybe a little far away from the mic. I don't know. How about now? Uh, it's way better. Okay. I just got to stand closer. Um, yeah, I, I researched DeFi, Web3, and this is where I wanted to take my career. So I was... Uh, Doing a work from home job at tech, uh, Ichi gave me an opportunity and I left that uh, to join a crypto project. Um, basic thing about Ichi, uh, pretty much we build vaults on top of Uniswap V3, uh, single sided deposit, 100% still non custodial, and uh, our bread and butter is like Uniswap V3, we manage a concentrated liquidity position uh, all around the clock. That's the difference. Uh, you, much, you deposit, you set it and forget it, and you let our system manage it with our, our new uh, chain link automation. Nice. And because of that, you uh, earn higher yield. The project's token, it's reduced, slippage is reduced. And another way for projects is they can earn yield, passive yield on their treasury. So uh, we're pretty much, we, we want to help DeFi projects and, you know, we're just fixing the things that are missing with this awesome concept that Uniswap V3 does, which is the concentrated liquidity uh, concept. And we're, that's where we're at right now. Uh, we work with other projects. Uh, we advise like strategies on how they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Our thing is that we keep it all automated. We keep it checked. And, you know, reducing the slippage is awesome for their community. Uh, for LPs, that's how they earn more yield. Mm -hmm. VCs, and anyone can join. Like, if you go on our app and you have any of the tokens there, mm -hmm. deposit that token, and that's it. It's on Uniswap V3. You don't have to do a double, dual-sided deposit. We made it easier for y'all. So it's just like and, a one, it's just like one drop in, like just one a transaction, forget about it, nice and done. I don't have to worry about swapping stuff and I don't have to worry about matching the right pools with the pairs and all that sort of stuff. 
Yeah, you don't have to, you know, if the, if the price range goes out of your parameter, usually you have to go, you have to change your parameters, you have to pay a gas fee. Say you go, you know, walk your dog, the price goes out of your parameter again. You're like, God damn it, I gotta switch it again. Pay more gas fees. We take care of all that for you. Makes it easy, um, you know, and it's a way for community members to participate and support their project. And also it answers that question, where what can I do to earn more yield, to earn more of the token? Yes, okay. they're staking, but um, I don't know if you guys saw the news with, you know, Kraken closing down their staking thing, mm -hmm. the SEC probing into that. So then there's that potential of, okay, will other companies get rid of staking? Mm -hmm. And also staking is awesome, but it's, you know, you have a withdrawal period. Mm -hmm. So who knows what's going to happen? And then as well, um, it's good in the beginning, but the rewards that come from staking are usually from the project's treasury. So it's not really helping the project in the long run you might lock up some liquidity but if you earn a lot take it you dump it well the project is like oh well so. <laughs> yeah we've seen that we've seen that so uh, a little bit too much uh, back in 2022 yeah um and to everybody listening um just give you guys a little bit of background about how i know peter um we actually met at consensus last year uh, which was crazy at the super moon party it was our Sorry uh, for everyone listening. Networking event. Um, <laughs> um, and it was awesome. Um, and yeah, so we met a lot of great people, potential partners. It was prime time. And that's where I met Peter. And it was awesome. So I'm going to see him down in East ben uh, Denver in about what two weeks from now, which is going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I'm happy you're still sticking around and uh, you guys made it through 2022 market with Ichi and everything like that. So it's, it's going to be great to see you again, Peter. Oh yeah, it was awesome. And yeah, um, if you're at East Denver, you know, uh, I'll have an Ichi shirt or I'll be, you know, you see what Alex looks like. You <laughs> hang around with him at after party. Yeah. Um, uh, the the few Asian guys with tattoos that's walking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys will be able to recognize me at East Denver because I'll be wearing my Colorado Avalanche coat. Um, but yes. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get back into a little bit, Peter. So, tell me, just by broad definition, what exactly what what's a vault, dude? What is a vault? Let's start simple. Just tell me what the heck a vault is. So our vault is pretty much our smart contract, right? So mm -hmm. to deposit in our vault. You, uh, you go in our app and then you just click that button uh, for what project token that you're looking to deposit. Yeah. You, you pick, now because of our chain link thing, you pick what token you want to pair it with. Right. But then again, when you're ready to execute the transaction, you don't have to put that other paired token. So say it's, um, say Footprint has a token, right? Yeah. Footprint and... You guys came up to us, we made you a vault, and you're like, we want it to be paired with ETH and Bitcoin. Awesome. Okay. Done. It's in the app. You tell everybody it's open. Uh, they go to the app. They click on the footprint uh, vault. Okay. They pick. And then on the, the uh, dual-sided one, they pick, okay, Bitcoin or ETH to pair it with. Done. How many tokens they want to put in. Pay the gas fee. And that's it. Okay. Um. And did you guys go with Chainlink just to, to just do the upgraded security? Um. I know Chainlink's pretty sweet. Um. For security wise, and a lot more DeFi protocols are implementing them. Is, is that kind of why you guys went with Chainlink? Uh. That. I mean, the reputation is is good as well, Chainlink's and also sweet, it, yeah. Yeah, and then it's uh the Chainlink um keepers, are the ones that have automated, so we can you know we can have the rebalancing of our vaults because in order to keep the LP, the whole liquidity pool concentrated around current price, you know, you need to manually push that button to rebalance it to our parameters. But with the chain link keepers, that's what they, that's what their main purpose is as well. Okay. Uh, we like, we like the team. Also, we are hoping to launch a vault with them. If anyone from Chainlink here is listening, you know, please reach out to me. But <laughs> we, wanna, we wanna, we definitely wanna, you know, strengthen our partnership. We do this with um with everyone we can, with everyone we work with. We want to educate people about these vaults, about this opportunity, uh, and all that stuff. 
So uh, while just Wither Volts it... too, is it guaranteed like uh, yield for any token? My question, the uh, reason I'm asking this is, what happens is, uh, let's say I put some uh, my uh, uh, as an example, yeah, put a token into the vault, and for some weird reason, it goes all the way to zero or it goes really down. How? What happens then? So uh, if you look on our app. Um, a lot of websites, they like to use APY and whatnot. I mean, that's cool, but because we want to keep our transparency, we use IRR, okay. uh, internal rate of return, and that's pretty much the performance of the vault since inception. That's how you can gauge how much yield, but because when you say APY, you're stating a fact. And as you could tell in crypto, facts are hard to state because stuff changes, especially with Tokens going up, to tokens going down. You know, we don't want to do that. We don't like to propose like this false hopium of, oh my God, you're going to re receive this much amount. So we use IRR as our measure rate of return. And you know, like any other, if, if a crypto token goes to, to zero, there's always, there's always risk. You know, we like to let people know there is risk. Everything has risk, you know, right. and everything has a vulnerability, but the thing is, we always like to keep transparent with projects, our future partnerships that we're pursuing, and also our community members participating in our vault. And we try and help out as much as we can. You know, if someone has a problem in our community with a vault or a transaction, you know, they submit a support ticket, we get our tech guys to help out as much as we can, and we'll keep going until we've exhausted all processes. And you said there's no lockup period, okay? So, like... I, I could deposit it and and then bang out of there as soon as I want. Oh yeah, I mean you just pay the gas fee, but um, and Oba the CEO was testing it. You know, we saw him deposit hundred dollars, withdraw it. Maybe thirty minutes later, deposit a thousand dollars, withdraw it. Deposit a hundred thousand dollars, withdraw it. And, and I get it. You know, you you want to test it, but yeah, it's non custodial as long as you pay the gas fees. You could take it. You can deposit and withdraw ten times a day. I mean, what uh, you're what, what networks <laughs> you running right now uh, for your vaults? So, you like a uh, Uniswap, I guess, is uh, Ethereum. Uh, right? So, yeah, we're on the Ethereum mainnet. We bridged to Polygon, and I saw that ENB uh, is going to have deployment of UniV3 as well. Okay. So pretty much anywhere that. It is uh, built on like BNB. I mean, we helped, we really assisted um, Boba facilitating the proposal as well. So now that you can launch vaults on for projects built on the Boba network, uh, same thing with BNB. If, say, Arbitrum decides to get it, we can launch on Arbitrum. Yeah, because that's what I was about to ask you as well, because, you know, Arbitrum's pretty hot, especially for, you know, uh, how crazy low the gas fees are though truthfully yeah. i wasn't really i didn't really feel like i paid a lot uh, the other night um depositing it or yeah uh transferring ethereum over i thought it was uh it's actually not too bad so uh, but i've heard right now there's also some horror stories going on with some people paying ridiculous gas fees for maybe nfts um so i don't know if that's just had to do with the timing of the block or um going forward but uh to uh, i guess another question is one of my biggest things especially regarding anything DeFi, is uh security um i was reading the 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 yearly uh, blockchain security report and um it said is 67 percent of all uh the, the hacks that happen these malicious moves um we're on DeFi protocols um so my big thing is like what can we do how can we trust the security on you guys how, how are you guys doing regular checks um really curious on that uh because i think you know obviously for everyone uh when they deposit it's you know everyone likes to say not your keys not your crypto but still i still think mm -hmm. it's a lot of on the protocol um for helping make sure that the users funds are safe so my question what are you doing for security yeah, definitely. We have uh, audits done by Certec and Quantstamp. Uh, that was actually done last year because we had uh, pretty updates, uh, pretty big updates to our system and our procedures. And pretty much uh, what our dev team likes to do is every time we make a big change, uh, we like to con we have um, a good contact connection with uh, Certec, we'll, or we'll contact them and we'll have them just do like a on the spot audit as well. Uh, also, with every vault launch, 
even though we can launch a vault in four hours, we our devs spend five to six days testing it uh, as well because they really want to get it down. I mean, it's a reputation that you're building. So if right. you're you get hacked in the space and whatnot, um, and then you know our dev team's always watching it over the holidays, over the weekend, uh, Thanksgiving. Someone tried to do some type of like sandwich attack on our vaults, and our devs caught it immediately and pause the rebalancing and then we were able to catch it and that was on a saturday so, <laughs> yeah. on a saturday nice go man you guys are on it i, I love it. <laughs> that's sweet um we have parameters that that ping um you know that ping our systems to let us know when there's some unusual activity happening i guess it, it does make sense that someone would try and mess around with the protocol on a like a holiday because they probably think oh yeah they're going with their family and whatnot but you know we're all we're still watching because th there's a lot of money uh, floating around and you know, we, we don't like to we don't like to take that lightly yeah absolutely uh <laughs> that's a huge thing um so um now i guess i kind of want to go more forward into what do you think about 2023 and the, the, the way of DeFi um, with this whole SEC cracking down on staking? How what how does this guys make you feel at Ichi? Um, and how is your guys' is, uh, oh, what's the word here? How is your guys' is, uh, projection for 2023 going? Um, do you guys think DeFi is going to be a lot hotter or is it going to pick up compared to the end of last year? I think it will, especially with like FTX happening and just a lot of stuff happening to like centralize uh, protocols and projects, SEC going after them now. It's like now it's now's the time to even create that bigger push to go from CFI to DeFi. Mm -hmm. um, there was someone that wrote a nice thread about why like DeFi in DeFi, you're pretty much cuddling, cutting out the middleman, which is banks. Uh, in the process of of money handling because in cfi you're, you're having all of that as well with with all the the big money moving around and all the persuasion and all that stuff i think i think this, I think this year will be good for DeFi. i mean the the zk roll-ups are showing a good thing and i think also maybe gaming projects as well i've, I've been seeing a lot of funding being closed for the the zk roll-up projects and gaming like the end of last year which is pretty uh pretty different to see yeah i um don't get me started on gaming guys will be here all day <laughs> i wonder I, I'm, I'm just excited who here has played um who here has played bomb crypto that's all i got into the game <laughs> you play bomb crypto that's like the OG. oh yeah <laughs> oh man also you guys too if you have any questions about what we're talking about here go into the chat and the community sharing uh, i'd love to hear what you guys think um or what you guys are confused on you know or anything like that let's get it clarified um we like to treat these data drives as uh, learning right to see about the different things um in the space right now and like to touch on a lot of different topics um so <clears throat> Yeah, if you got any questions, please feel free to throw them down. Um, anyways, people, so talking about your first GameFi project, what was the first DeFi project you dipped your toes in? That was the the Wonderland. Oh, the Astro. Wonderland. That's right. Yeah, I've yeah. actually. So I've. I don't actually. I have know nothing about Wonderland. This is earlier than me. So what happened here? What was Wonderland? What was the story behind this? I was a complete idiot. Like I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was me in the space. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I read some articles about this, you know, Wonderland going to be the next big thing. Watched some, some interviews of, uh, was that, Daniela Sesta. Uh, and, you know, he's talking about the thing with, like, sushi and, and um, uh, magic internet money, all that, like, all these projects connecting. All I knew is I was on Wonderland, and I saw that graph bar of how many Lambos you can win. <laughs> or how many Lambos you can buy with that. And I was like, all right, forget it, why not? Let me just see. And then and some um some hit article piece came out about Sifu. And then the prices started tanking. I think some cascading liquidation started happening mm -hmm. from leveraging. And then I just saw my position go down the drain. And I was like, what did I just do? So that's when I started researching. All right, what is DeFi? <laughs> what is uh <laughs> yeah, man, what is all let me let me let me educate myself before 
became a super degen. I mean, I used to trade options and stocks. Mm-hmm. So I was part of the whole Wall Street bets uh, community and oh, yeah, uh, GameStop. Oh, you still holding your GameStop? Oh, I, I mean, I made money on like AMC and all that stuff. Oh, I'm yeah. a little more. Yeah, that's, a little more old, uh, that's old, man, the AMC. <laughs> I'm a little more bougie now when I trade like options on like uh, triple Q or something like that, or some spy puts and calls. But I don't, uh, it, it, yeah, I don't, I can't really take all that time to keep researching. And you know, like it's I funny used. you say that too because it's always the exact same way. It's crazy how much more I just started wanting to learn about it the minute I started losing all my money. Um, all right. it's, it, it's crazy how it really lights a fire under your butt and gets you motivated. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it's either. Either you like you you cry about it and you're like, oh, I'm never touching crypto again, or you you figure out what you did wrong and then how you can learn from it. Yeah, well, I hope this Wonderland uh, fiasco wasn't too hard of a hit. I mean, for me, I I think if I took too too big of a hit, man, it might just turn me off. Um, so I'm happy <laughs> you're still in here, man. Um, if it was, well, all right. So next. What about the second? So you start doing your research. You're like, okay, I'm I'm the DeFi guy now. I know what's up. What was the, what was what was the second thing you really got into? This is where you started learning about. Did you ever get into lever or uh, lending? Anything like that? No, I never got into leveraging just because you know I was in the stock market game before, and you know with shorting and all that stuff, and seeing people's accounts get blown up and just seeing horror stories. I never wanted to really touch into to leveraging it and all that you know there was there's was rari and all that stuff that happened and it can get abused a lot easily and if you're not smart with it and you're too degen yet yeah, you can blow up your account i mean even with options i've blown up accounts before so i try to be a little when it comes to that now i'm a little more conservative okay cool have you, have, have, you? <laughs> have i ever been burned um have you used the leveraging protocol? Oh, leveraging? No, I've looked into it. Um, honestly, uh, I really wish I, I could. I really wish I could. I seen today um on Blur these there was like sixty four or oh my six, God. like ten million dollars worth of volume of board apes traded, just an insane amount. Um, and the boys are playing the system because it, they could just tank oh. it. Uh, but this is just the whole blur airdrop thing. I guess that's what I want to talk about a little recent news. Have you been looking into this whole blur? What's going on with blur and the transactions going crazy and um, people trying to make as much money as possible here? Uh, I I know that they, if I'm correct, they're a competitor of OpenSea, right? Right, and so it's like uh, it's like I would consider, you know, like last week we talked about MEV, uh, trading, high frequency trading. Um, Blur is the NFT marketplace equivalent for traders that want to snipe stuff quick, and it's high transactions. It's really it's very competitive on Blur, um, and by doing so, you can actually get some really good deals. Um, you can. <clears throat> You can sell. Yeah, like Blur is just like for the advanced NFT trader, which I am not. It is very appealing. Mm, gotcha. Right, and um, right now, how their airdrop is working is by volume. Um, so let me pull up the rules here, uh, which is pretty cool. Let me go to. Uh, so we have this on our footprint. Um, uh, do you have like a an analytics cell on Blur? Yes, I do, and I'll send it into the chat for you guys to take a look at as well. So the Blur that airdrop. Thing is crazy. So <laughs> the volume that's low. Yeah, so there there's gonna be three rounds for this airdrop, and right now we're on uh, airdrop one, and this is for everyone who traded in the six months prior to the launch of Blur Marketplace. So the reason they did this was so that they could get enhanced traders to um, use Blur. Just on the on the promise of an airdrop. So I put this in the community chat for you guys to take a look at. Oh, God, that is our Discord uh, event actually. So let me uh, get the right one here. Uh, let's go on my copy, <laughs> my little copy paste. All right, there we go. We're back. So here we go. Here's the the blurred airdrop. So a lot of people are making a lot of money. 95% or 94.5% of the total airdrop has been done. Um, and we're seeing this address here has got 3.2 million tokens of the 360 million dropped. Like these boys are farming, farming here. 
Um, how much? How much is a uh, one blur token? Let's look it up. See, three hundred sixty million have been airdropped. Yeah, so it's one point. It's one dollar five cents U.S. So three hundred sixty million dollars, pretty much, has been airdropped. And where yeah. was I when this happened? <laughs> 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 yeah, and people are making like multiple millions of dollars by uh, gaming the system pretty well, um, and they're doing it by volume. Oh man! Mm. So what'll happen is you'll see a bunch of board apes go up in price, and some whale will scoop them up, and so that they can get on. And then they hope, in the meantime, that uh, they can post them up, and someone else will sell them. So they're always taking the risk of you know these high value items not selling but because it's so hot and people are trying to farm this heavy or they did try to farm it heavy i i i don't know if it is still being done i'm sure i'm sure i think it's still being done but um and they're just taking these big risks and but it's not really that big of a risk because then someone else is like hey i'm trying to farm some coin too and then they're gonna buy it um and it's just a cool. cycle so is the price action of Blur Token, has that been super volatile, I'm guessing? I haven't been paying attention. I just well, see the news articles. Today, let's take a look. Um, so let's look at the last, because I think the Blur Token hasn't really been launched hard. So it's like, it was up at 50% uh, three months ago, or 50 cents three months ago. And now today it's at a dollar. Yeah. <clears throat> but it doesn't really matter because no one had it until this uh, air drop. Mm, okay. Or I wonder. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Actually, I need to. I need to double check on my um, stats here before I keep talking. But um, has it been very volatile? Um, not. It's been up to like a dollar twenty-five and stuff like that. So, um, huh. okay. In the last seven days. The last seven days has been. Uh, very volatile, very volatile, up to like a dollar thirty-three. Now it's a dollar four. That makes sense, though. People are dumping what they got. People yeah. are dumping it. Um, we so. did, um, we did reach out to them, but you know, there's a lot of activity in the Discord, so I don't know what's going on. It probably our traffic is being missed in the sauce because we have currently three Uniswap V3 pools, and they each have like double digit millions in those pools so people it's either people or the project or vcs are actually also uh dumping their liquidity in there mm -hmm. and earning yield which is actually smart because if the token will be traded a lot now these lps are starting to earn yield mm -hmm. and earn profit so i mean that's one of the reasons why we you know, well, with lps you can earn a lot to be traded it's like it's actually relatively safe. I mean, is a blur is promising two more airdrops after this, right? So, um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so more volatility, more trading means the LPs are earning more, they're yeah. the ones that are earning, <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if we'll see uh, blur bouncing out anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> now, now, Peter, I, did you sign up for that one inch event? Um, in Denver. I'm very excited. How excited are you to talk to those one-inch boys? We used to have a vault with them. Um, I've been meaning to connect with them at Masari, but I was busy. So definitely want to reconnect with them as well, just mm -hmm. because we had our old-style vaults with them. Uh, now with this new one, I think they will be interested in this one uh, if we, uh, if I'm able to connect with them. But I also heard, you said it's a, a big networking thing. You know, we'll see other projects as well. And um, most likely it's open bar. So, of course, I'm always excited. <laughs> yeah, I'll be uh, drinking soda waters. Uh, wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> um, Crypto King asked, how do I join the Blur Airdrop? Um, you had to have do tra um, trading volume of the last six months. Um, to be eligible. So if you haven't done any transactions on Blur uh, six months, I don't think you're eligible, but unfortunately. I'm glad he asked because, yeah, I wanted to know too because I was like, how do I get in on this airdrop? <laughs> so now we got to figure out airdrop number two. How do we get in on that? I don't know the rules for it, actually. So um, I bet you they will release them probably, well, 
I don't know. What do you think? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe they have already released the rules. I'm not sure. If I say I had released the rules like two weeks before the actual air drop, <laughs> just so people don't. Oh, it's not... I got a question on a, a certain project. I want your thoughts on this. Okay. I've been seeing uh, some articles about it, and I guess they released some, some pretty good news. It's a company in China called Conflux. Conflux. And uh, they, they had some partner with, I think, the like Instagram of China or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's called like Redbook. And that price just skyrocketed from like two cents. If you look at it now, it's maybe in like 24, went all the way up to 30 cents from five cents two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy run. Now I'm seeing some, some tweets that this could be like, saying the ethereum of china or something and i'm like well, okay well this might be a big thing you know we talk we see it in the news too hong kong has been um it'd be getting a lot of traction i think july 1st is when they'll officially release hong kong's crypto rules but what they're looking to do is to make it a crypto hub um similar to how it oh. is a financial hub in asia um they're looking to do that with mm-hmm. hong kong um and then we see the other uh, we're okay. gonna see the shanghai fork coming in so um, it, you know and truthfully there is a lot of people in china right for let's just let's just start there there's a lot of people that live there um so oh, yeah. you know if there's going to be a ton of people that are interested in the web3 and they've just been waiting to go through i believe like nfts were really hot for a while china has interest in uh, web3 so it'll be uh, very interesting mm. to see how this all plays out um and I'm curious to see how uh, how we're gonna have to start uh, doing our research on all these new uh, protocols coming out of China. Um, make sure to make sure I don't uh, <clears throat> new avenues. So uh, always make sure to do your guys' research uh, when looking into this sort of stuff. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and you guys see too. Tezos today announced that Google Cloud is gonna be one of the node validators. Um, which is a pretty big step. I have seen all Google's been making a ton of moves in the last couple of months trying to get into Web3. Um, I, I was at a Google event in San Francisco that was Web3 focused. It was the women in crypto, Google, um, and it was awesome. It was really sweet, and you can really see the push that Google is making. So now we're seeing it with Tezos, um, the Google Cloud. Oh, so they actually did it. Yeah. It's crazy. Is that, yeah. Um, when I was at Mainnet, I met a... Uh, like a software engineer from Google, and he was telling me that, yeah, we're looking for a network to start uh, jumping on it with Web3 stuff. I didn't know they they were going to take up being a validator, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then there's that news with, um, I think it was Ava Labs. They integrated with uh, Amazon, Amazon AWS. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. AVAX has been uh, working in the... In the... Behind the scenes, right? They released AVAX Gaming 2 recently. Um, it's really nice to see them building. Um, I was during, I was at AVAX. Um, what was it? It was AVAX Week down in Berkeley. I forget the exact name of the event, but that was also quite cool. Um, you can see a lot of people building and learning about Avalanche. Um, and truthfully, I remember back when I first started. Um, doing everything with footprint i remember that the avax scene was the scene that i did not want to did not want to uh, say anything bad about or anything critical <laughs> of because i did not want those community guys coming after me um and then all of a sudden oh, well. I just, yeah i didn't hear nothing and it's nice to see that they're making these big moves uh, because they really did have a good good community and stuff like that so we're looking forward to that thing i like seeing is i like seeing like the the integration from like web two companies especially these big ones going with Web3, like you said, Google with Tezos, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, AWS, Amazon with Ava Labs, um, even like the Web2 company from China, that one with Conflux, all that stuff. I like seeing the integration. Uh, Another one, Near Protocol, they have their their source code can be written in Rust and in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing for, you know, Open up that avenue for Web2 developers if they ever want to build on a crypto or they ever curious to uh, jump into the Web3 space. There's that avenue right there. So I like the the, the adaptation and um, uh, the initiative that these crypto and Web3 companies are opening for people to join in and making it easier that transition instead of learning something completely new. Mm. And two. 
I wanted to touch a little bit on uh, the China thing. Tencent today actually released their Web3 initiatives, um, which is huge. You know, the Great Firewall, Tencent, uh, League of Legends, Epic Games, that's all owned by Tencent. So um, they're breaking into Web3 and they got some new uh, guidelines and rules and announcing who they're going to be working with. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty big news, again, uh, for Web3, um, especially if Tencent is uh, hopping in. Um, what, but, is, what is Tencent? Um, Tencent is like uh, the. What I should Google it officially, but it's like the software company. It's uh, Tencent is what creates a great firewall. So what uh -huh. is they have a lot of um, Tencent. What is Tencent? They also have QQ, which is a music. Um, it's. Yeah, it's a multinational technology and entertainment conglomerate. That's what it is. So it has a bunch of media platforms and everything like that. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, but other than that, guys, I'm kind of wrapping it up. We even went five minutes past how long it was supposed to be. Uh, it didn't really feel like 36, uh, 35 minutes. Um, so I, I was... Wanted... <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to thank everybody for listening in today. Um, if you uh, want to share it with your friends, I have this recorded. Um, we're actually going to post it up on a podcast. So again, I want to thank you guys all for listening. Uh, Crypto King, I'm going to get back to you on your question here after the call. Um, and yeah, thank you again, uh, everybody. Peter, is there anything uh, you'd like to say? Just closing her up here. Oh, uh, thanks everybody for uh, listening, uh, hearing us talk. Thank you, Alex, for hosting me again. I love doing these talks. And yeah, if you're at ETH Denver, definitely, you know, reach out. Let's get up. Let's grab a drink or something like that. I love meeting uh, crypto, just retail people, community members or anything like that. And it's an awesome space to be in. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again for joining. And everybody, we'll see you next week uh, on Footprint Data Drive number five Ooh, i like that sound of that it rhymes sounds good okay but we'll catch you there uh we'll catch you on our next week uh same time uh 5 p.m pst wednesday um and yeah we'll see you there okay everybody um, where do you uh where do you where do you upload these i want to definitely watch this <laughs> um so i'm we're working on a medium i have it recorded so i record through obs um and then i send the video okay. file over um so all we do is just uh